Oh, hello there, boys and girls. Elton McFall here at a, uh, a friend of mine's place uh, here in Montreal that uh, I happen to be in the area, which I'm rarely in because it's far from my place by metro and bus and all that jazz. And um, it was unfortunately I found out that um, I just found out a few minutes ago that a friend of mine who uh, owns this and a few other cars he, uh, he passed on, unfortunately, and. Uh, Hence the expression, all good things come to an end. And, uh, and um, I got a permission from his daughter to uh, do this little video of this Chevy. And, uh, oh, I see he had some hubcaps here. Look at this. What are these hubcaps? Oh, they're Ford hubcaps. That's funny, I had one of those actually. But he, I've seen this car for the last 20 years, 21, 22 years. And uh, it used to be in better shape, but this is what happens when you leave a car outside for like 20, 25 years, you know. And here's his, uh, his T-Bird. Actually, some of you guys who lived in Montreal a long time and you've been through this area, you've seen these cars before because... And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to document this because it's become very rare uh, to see this many old cars in one place in the city or in any city for a lot of reasons you know because people are savages and uh, there's you know all kinds of laws from cities and they, the neighbors don't want to see them and blah 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 and you know and actually this is I think the first time or second time only I ever get this close to this uh, what's known as a business coupe and this probably has a 216 or a 230 six cylinder engine Unfortunately, we can't see the uh, the front too well there, but uh, what uh, maybe what I'll do is uh, actually no, I've never seen the front of this car. It would be amazing if I could actually find the picture I took of it 20 years ago. Uh, but you know, when you have thousands of pictures like me, uh, that's that's not an easy feat. Obviously, uh, I never had a good look at this car because it looks to me those seats are not from this car. They look like these they're from another car because they're blue and white. locked but it's in good shape this car is restorable you know it's it looks complete rust is surface rust good metal rocker panels not bad it's pretty damn good for a car that's been outside for so long you know because the thing is but then again actually I'm curious what does the underneath look like after so many years Look at that, built to last, man. Look at the frame rails, they're actually still good. Shit, even the exhaust still looks good. Wow, that's surprising. Because the thing is that, you know, when these cars sit out in the snow, that's the worst, because everything, all the humidity gets trapped underneath. It's like a death sentence, death sentence for these cars. But uh, anyway, like I was telling uh, uh, my friend's kids here, I don't want to show out of respect, of course, that hopefully these cars are going to go to a good home and they'll be restored. There's another one there. Uh, I'll get to it after, actually. But, uh, yeah, imagine, though, if these cars were in the West Coast, they, they wouldn't have any rust holes through them or anything. It's just it's the ideal place to have these cars, you know. But actually, let me just check once again that door. Yeah, it's locked. But I was telling my friend's daughter, I said, man, or I was telling his kids that are here, I was like, man, if we're up to me, I'd love to get a battery and put some gas in that carburetor and see if that T-Bird would crank up. Actually, they see if any of these would crank up. That's a dream I've had <laughs> for some time now, being watching so many videos of these cars that I haven't ran in, in eons, you know, and they come back to life. So, but anyway, guys, I just wanted to do a little quick thing. And, uh... Look at those ancient tires, man. Wait a second, I gotta get a shot of those tires from my friend Scott out west. He loves these old tires. Uh, I can't see the name really. Anyway, whatever. So that's it, just a little thing. So, um, hey, if you have any memories of seeing this stuff or you know who I'm talking about, my friend Bill, well, please, uh, you know, by, by no means, by all means, uh, leave your comment, you know. So that's it, man. Uh, 
Another chapter ends with one owner and it'll begin with a new one, whoever it is. Take care. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention. You know what? My friend here who passed away recently, he had a 55 Chevy Bel Air here, right here, for for many years. And you know what? That car was from Cuba. It came off a boat with a few other classic cars. And uh, that was like, oh my God, almost 25 years ago. I wanted to buy that car in 2006. And... Um, he sold it just a couple of years ago. So, anyway, so thanks again for watching. And uh, you see that the sun comes out. There you go. I'll give you one last shot over there. The working man's car. Bye bye. Okay, guys. So I thought I would include this amazing '57 Chevy that I found out that my friend Bill, who used to rock this Crown Victoria up until he died, um, died suddenly. Unfortunately, he was 66. He, um, he bought the Chevy, I think, in the 70s. His daughter just told me. And the battery's dying. Shit, I thought I had charged the batteries. And he modified it. Imagine that. He had this car, like what, 40 years? More than 40 years? I mean, that's incredible. I had to back up the, uh, the bins here to get a good shot of it. I mean, I got a picture of this car. I, took, I got pictures of this car I took like 20 years ago. And I was lucky at the time too because it was still drivable and he, he had the SN showing this from the street and he had a 67 rusted out uh, Bel Air over there which was scrapped, I'm not surprised. And uh, so these cars, they're going to be sold quick, that's for sure. There's already takers on this one here. And the T-Bird, uh, sorry, the, the Chevy, I don't know, but uh, there's your hood pins right there. So, since it's a hot rod, it probably has 350 in it, or 327, something like that. Doors are probably locked. No, they're open. Hey, the interior is actually looking still pretty good. Shit, considering this car has been here for like forever. It's in good shape. Ah, uh, the old musty, the old musty GM upholstery, eh? Door panels were changed. This used to be a damn cool car though, you know? Look at that, they're in good shape. Not rusted at all. Not rusted, man. It's pretty pretty impressive again for a car that hasn't moved for like practically. Okay, I got a fresh battery in there. A little worried though, because usually I'm on top of that. The other battery was dead and I, I usually leave my place with both batteries totally charged. Look at the size of these slicks here in the back, eh? They look like slicks. That stupid phone is playing I got a new phone and now it's playing music I don't know why it's playing music uh, on its own hang on a second guys damn it to hell there we go so the oh by the way this is not a Bel Air right this is a 210 the 210 was like the Bel Air it had a little less chrome it was more uh, inexpensive as they see here's your rear end and your fuel goes in here no, wait a minute. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. Oh man, that hasn't been open in a long time. I'm sure whatever fuel that might be left in this thing is poison to that motor. You know, that the T-Bird you saw real quick, I said, you know, I, I told the, the daughters, I said, I love that car, but the thing is that it's so common, and I'm, I know this is common too. It's a 57 Chevy sedan, it's very common, but it's one of a kind, the guy, hot rodded like this like over 40 years ago so that's why to me this car is a big deal you know oh yeah oh there we go it used to be red wow a car that used to be red and now blue well bill if you're around buddy i hope you're glad you're seeing me film this and document this for my many fans because uh now you're gone and your cars will soon be as well too and go into other homes and other places and be uh and be um restored i wonder if the fucking hood will open i'm not gonna attempt to see it i think oh yeah it's open there it is oh it's a what what are those heads that looks like a 283 or 350 327 something like that Got dual horns. Yeah. Close that up. There we go. It's 
funny though because he never put the top chrome pieces around the grill. He never put those back on. I just thought that was interesting. But hey, you know, that was what, the 70s, the 80s? Anyway, it's great to see that. And uh, like I told his daughter, I said this will be a little homage to the gentleman who kept these cars for so long. And some people would say, oh, you know, they rusted. They used to be beautiful. And yeah, but you know, whatever. How many cars do you think get you know catch on fire or get into car accidents you know because they're driven and fucking engine blows up or whatever you name it so whatever might as well just get a last shot i guess at the other side if i can eh? i think i got bit by something shit no. hang on guys i think i got bit by a mosquito yeah i guess somebody put that little piece of carpet just so nothing gets into the engine on the blower because it looks like there was no air cleaner on it so not too good. Uh, but you know, even though I'm visually impaired, as I told uh, my friend's daughter here, that uh, I can't drive legally due to my shitty eyesight, you know, there's still a part of me that uh, sees it. I still see the, the possibility of owning another oldie, you know? I mean, it's just, it's like I told her, I said, it's just, that's like a guy who's been married to his wife who would never divorce her. It's, my friend was like that with these cars. He never, nothing, he what? He sold one of them? <laughs> it's just, it's love, man. You know, it's just, it doesn't matter if you have one or not. It's just absolutely when you're a fanatic, you know. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, take care. And uh, I think I'm going to go rock a ice cappuccino. At the Bye bye. Well, since the kids aren't around her anymore, and I don't know if I'll ever see this car again anyway, regardless of what I said, that it's not, unusual, that it's not a, a rare car, it's still awesome. I mean, hell, I remember taking a picture of this car 20 years ago. It was jet black, smooth, it was right at Covert Street Metro, which is right near here, actually right down the street over here. And, you know, it was uh, just, it's still an amazing car, but obviously it's going to need, uh, you know, way more love. Uh, and, and actually, oddly enough, out of the three cars you've seen, this one has actually the rusted the most, and it's the newest. Look look at the, uh, the rust on the uh, body panels, you know, but, you know, hey... But oddly enough, the interior didn't didn't end up in bad shape, though. Interior is still decent. Again, all these cars, they've been sitting here like 20 years, you know? So anyway. You know, wouldn't it be a small world if in the future, you know, regardless if I can drive or not, fucking scrap, that I would happen to be able to buy one of these cars, you know? And like I was saying, man, I wish I could have bought that 55 Chevy years ago because the guy who bought it, I think, you know, the daughter, she says he turned into a police car. Fuck, I mean, uh, yeah, but what does that mean? Is it the original motor? Because that car was weird, because, you know, a car is totally an export model, because it had a 265 V8, which was original, and it was a standard transmission. It wasn't even automatic. That's unheard of. So, you know, I would have left it the way it is. Former glory. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.